folks, welcome back to my channel, I'm Kat, and today I would like to talk about Babel by Arthur Kuang. In the story, Robin Swift, we never learn his real Chinese name, gets taken from his home after his mother and other relatives or people in his household die of Asiatic cholera, and gets taken to England by Professor Lowell, who provides him with a loveless home but an extensive education in languages. After several years of learning Latin and Greek, Robin attends Babel, the Translation Institute at Oxford University. For the first time in his life, he is with kindred spirits, Rami, Victoire and Letty, all of whom have to fight for their place in society and at the institution constantly, and never feel like they truly belong. Soon, Robin notices that working towards a place at the top floor of Babel, where they do silver working and therefore create magic for the British Empire, might promise him a prosperous life, but what about all the people in the colonies or any other foreigner coming to Britain? I've obviously seen this book around social media and quite a few people seem to be really into it and I'm glad I finally picked it up because I adored this book as well. It is overall a rather long book, but it never gets boring, and even the parts that are slower before things really blow up never feel actually slow. The magic system, and therefore the silver working in the book, was fascinating as a concept. For a silver bar to actually do anything, you need at least two languages engraved on it, and the gap between the meaning of said word and the translation in another language is what causes the effect of the magic. So at the very beginning you see the silver bar with the English word treacle, so the sweet, and an old French word for antidote, triacle, in action, which means you get to taste treacle, but you also get healed because the French meaning is quite a bit removed from the English word. This opens up a lot of interesting possibilities, but mostly I can say that I'm pretty sure I would never be able to earn myself a spot in the silver working section at Babel. <laughs> because the magic system has such a strong focus on language, you get a lot of explanations on etymology and where words come from and how they relate to each other. And it was overall very interesting, but you might get more out of it the more languages you actually speak. There's quite a few things on Chinese, obviously, then some things for French and Haitian in particular, which is very different from French, and a couple of other languages. And it's just the more of these languages you understand, at least a little bit, the more you might get out of this. Most characters you spend any amount of time with, really, are complex and interesting. Some of the side characters are a bit more flat, obviously, because you don't get to spend any time with it, and also because they're a sign of their times. Virtually all men, or all British men, Robin encounters are racist, entitled brats. Which matches with what you've seen in behavior from colonists in their time, so... I guess it tracks. Doesn't make them interesting as characters, but then again, you don't spend any time with any of these people, really. With the exception of Professor Lowell, maybe. You get to see a bit more there, but um, he's still an ass. Yeah, so I think on the whole you meet two British characters, maybe, that are, okay, maybe three, that are halfway decent human beings, and for two of them you can't really tell because you don't spend enough time with them, but yeah, but then again the focus in the story is very much on the people that moved to Britain against their will, it should be added, and who feel like they don't belong, so that all makes sense. Also the entitlement and racist nonsense you see from the British men in this book kind of match up with what you see in UK politicians now. Anybody with old money pretty much lives up to, or rather lives down to what you see from British people in this book. I really enjoyed the friendship between the four main characters. It didn't start out so well with the girls thinking the two guys were idiots, but they get over it and they bond and it's very much a found family that was just heartwarming until things went sideways for, well, everybody. 
I'll try not to give anything away, so I have to keep this somewhat vague, but while I can understand where a certain character is coming from when they make a certain decision that has terrible consequences for just about everybody, I'm still mad at them. And forever will be. Learn to handle rejection with some grace. One thing I really appreciated was that there is no romance on the page really. Like you have one character who likes somebody else but it doesn't go anywhere. Then you have a couple of side characters that get together but it's all just on the fringes. And for Robin, whose perspective you see the whole thing from except for short interlude chapters, there's no romance on the page and I really like that. He has a lot of important stuff going on and he has no time for this. He doesn't actually say that he doesn't have any time for this. He just shows no romantic interest in anybody at any point. And I quite enjoyed reading a character like that. I'm not going to say much about how the book handles colonialism because it's obviously a focal point in the story with all of your main characters coming from other countries, okay, except one, against their will. So I'm not going to say much about that because I'm quite frankly the wrong person to comment on it. But it gives you a lot of insight into how the British Empire was run, okay, with the addition of magic in this world, but it's not so much different from what actually went down. The book might make you question some things or ideas you've held that you are never really aware of. So while I'm still mad about what happened to some characters, my favorite in particular, I enjoyed the book as a whole a lot and can only recommend it. I would give it this cat. Yep, this book deserves a Cleo. Now, if you still miss the days of the British Empire and how great it was, despite the fact that none of us were alive for it and those days were not great for the vast majority of people, unless you were a British aristocrat or whatever, then you will not enjoy how this book dissects colonialism and its effects. Everybody else will enjoy reading it from the perspective of people who have been forced into the British Empire and have no real interest of being a part of it. Also because regardless of how much they would try, they would never truly belong, which is something that virtually everybody around them makes sure they know at all times. Let me know in the comments what your favorite book with a focus on language is. Because I found this one really fascinating and I hope there's more out there like it. Like and subscribe if you want to help this channel out and I'll be back next week with another video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!